money. When he would go out and do personal appearances, he was boss hog. Yeah, I mean, he, he didn't go as Sorrel Book, he went as boss hog, of and he course. put the costume on at nine o'clock in the morning and maybe see thousands of people and never get the slightest, not only not get out of character, but be working improvisationally right. the whole time in character. And uh, he, he, he went it. out just about every weekend. The guy worked seven days a week. Well, I remember one of the first times I ever rehearsed with Boss, like you were saying, before the scene. It was when uh, Andy, Andrew Johnson was on the show playing the bad guy, the guy from uh, Dirty Harry. So I sat down on the chair and they started, uh, started running their lines in Japanese. <laughs> His oh boss was a no, brilliant That's man. Right. He spoke six I remember that. Yeah. Yes. Brilliant, brilliant man. And, and Andy had, uh, had also the Japanese, so they started running the scene in Japanese. And whenever my part came, they'd just stop and look at me. I'd throw the line in English. <laughs> you know, Denver, Denver Powell was a, uh, a sort of a, he was like an anchor. You know, I mean, that guy was so solid and so consistent, so experienced. Uh, and he was, you know, the, he was order, you know, Boss Hog and Brasco were the law, which, which in Hazard County was, you know, what it was. It, it, but Denver Powell, as Uncle Jesse, was order. He was tradition. Yep. And, he was uh, family. And he family. taught, I think, not just the Dukes and the rest of us around there, but generations of kids how to behave. Right yep. from wrong, good from bad, a real moral authority. It was a great way to be able to, to, uh, to help raise your kids and yeah there was the driving and all that sort of things but I've had so many people now over the years come back and say that they are they were so thankful to have a safe place to go on Friday night that actually helped them with their kids on Saturday morning yeah, oh, yeah. That's right. the things that I've done been involved in since it never ceases to amaze me how people just don't know how to deal with cars and cameras Paul <laughs> <laughs> you spoiled us I mean when I when I look at the show or I do something else and I think you know gone are the days of the beautiful fallen oak tree and the water with the ducks on it and the gender I mean it's just so so beautiful though remember those great shots we'd have the the trees down and there'd be remember one where the the ducks were on the lake and then all of a sudden the general Lee comes Rawr! flying over and the ducks are ducks are just getting out of the way and... <laughs> there was one essential element to the Dukes of Hazard that people often overlook because uh, you know Roscoe and boss and then you and the, not just the camaraderie <laughs> not just the camaraderie no no more than that <laughs> now I'm talking about Paul Baxley yes and Paul Baxley and his guys created the tone of this show, the pace of this show, the spirit of this show. They did it down in Georgia. And by the time we came out of there, there was an extraordinary thing happening. He took the chemistry of the cast yeah. and the fun of the idea and made it, brought it to life. Him and those stunt guys, Gary and Craig and Junior and Henry and Bob Orison, mm -hmm. uh, deserve credit. Oh, for absolutely. making us look absolutely. good week after week, and, and to me it was yeah. his show. They yeah. we were fabulous. These guys did more stunts before lunch than most people do in a week. And there was a shot where the, the General Lee was driving through a ravine somewhere, and the two police cars came up and jumped on either side of the creek and then oh. hit, boom, oh, and then spun and then landed. Yes. And the General Lee, boom, right yeah. there. Yes. Yeah, that was bring in specialists for that. I love Georgia. I thought it was I just Georgia was great. Too. Georgia's a beautiful state. Didn't have to build anything, do anything. Jump the car through a barn. They'd say, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We're going to tear it down anyway. Yeah. Help us out. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. No Never, yeah. and all the people would come out and help you. Know, like out here, you know, you got to pay them 50 million bucks to turn around. <laughs> there would drive the horses, the cattle, the cows, yeah. everything. It was just absolutely. <laughs> Jimmy and I were in the police car and it flipped over, right? And suddenly, and the car is still smoking, and Gary jumped out and everything. And I look around and here comes Jimmy Bass toward. I thought, oh. I said, Jimmy, are you going to do this? And he said, yeah. I said, Oh my God! And I turned to Paul and I said, "It's still smoking. <laughs> it could catch fire." And he and you said, "Peg, we only had enough gas in to flip it over like a half <laughs> cup. It's not going." I said, "Oh God!" <laughs> and then you said, "Baby, you can do it." <laughs> <laughs> you did it. You did Anybody it. calls me baby. <laughs> Hi, Paul. No, listen, she didn't back away <laughs> from anything. we did it. And Paul had so much fun doing close-ups, if any of you recall. Not to no. me, he never okay, did. Okay, well then let me just yeah. Not to you, baby. <laughs>